you miss it again. Uh, keep trying, son. Oh, that was closer. The fish in this stream are too smart, Daddy. Got away again. It takes practice, son. And if the county gives their sheriff a vacation this spring, we're going to have lots of it. Just the two of us, huh? That's right. Three whole weeks. You bet. Hot ziggity. Say, you better close your mouth. You're going to catch flies instead of fish. Come on, now, Pop. You make me nervous. Come on. Oh, I'll get a big one this time. Hey! A big one, eh? I'm sorry, Dad. If you can't do any better than that, you better go back to worms. <laughs> hey, take it easy, will you? Here. Now, let me show you. Remember, son, the trick is to use your wrist. Keep your elbow close to your body, then you won't use your whole arm. Now watch. There. Hey, Dad, you never miss. I guess you're about the best fly fisherman in the whole state. That's what your ma used to say, Bob. I guess she just wanted to make me feel good when I'd come home skunk. Maybe she really believed it. Just like, well, you know how it is. Of course I do, son. Fella likes to think that his pal is just about tops and everything. That's right. Say, Dad, if we want to kiss that early evening rise, we better get going. Now you're talking. I'll tell you what. You uh, run over to Meekins and get my land in there. See that everything is packed? And meet me at the office in half hour. You gotta go to the office? Yes. I've got to catch the state police broadcast. Oh, I'll pick up some grub at Aunt Mildred's stand on the way. I'll see you at the office. Be sure you're ready. I'll be ready. Attention. Arrest and hold for federal authorities. Charles Howard, alias Arnold Lewis, alias Francis Baker, wanted on federal warrant for murder growing out of newspaper circulation war in Oklahoma. Age 29, height 5 feet 11, complexion dark, weight 166, eyes brown, distinguishing marks none, fingerprints as follows. This man is dangerous. Last seen driving Brown Roadster with Illinois license plates. Number 9, 9604. Heading south on Highway 11. Use extreme caution. This man is heavily armed. You see how bad even between meals is? If you hadn't stopped at Ann Mildred's stand, I sure would have missed you. Now just blacken the tips of those pretty fingers, son. And give me a set of prints. Won't hurt a bit. Sure, but um, what about these little charm bracelets? Ooh. Dad, just tell me you'll be all right. No, son. I'm afraid. I'm afraid he spoiled our fishing trip. No, I don't care about any old fishing trip, Daddy. I just want you. You're a good boy, son. Just like I always wanted you to be. Stay that way. Always. Yeah, sure. Sure, but you're gonna be all right. We'll have lots of good times together, like nothing happened. Remember, son, when you're fishing, keep your elbow close. Yeah, sure, Dad. I'll never forget, never. Dad, talk to me. Dad. Dad. I'll get him. I'll get him someday, someplace. But I'll get him.
Here you are, son. Wish it was more. All that's left after paying funeral expenses. I know, sir. Sure you want to leave? After all, you've got friends in this town. But everything reminds me of Dad. You know how it is, sir. Yeah. Well, good luck, Bob. Thanks. What are you doing here, son? Oh, just wondering whether to go in there or get something to eat. Can't do both. You wouldn't want to go in there. It ain't too fancy. That's not the point, young fella. There just ain't any place for you. Thanks, officer. Guess I'll get something to eat. Been in town long? Three days. What have you been doing? Mostly looking for work. No luck, huh? Where have you been sleeping? First night I slept in a car barn. Last night I kind of dozed off in a truck. Tonight it was gone. Look, son, there's one spot in this town for a boy like you. Go down Pearl to Baker Street. Turn right a half a block. You'll find the Dutton Newsboys home there. Oh, I'm not a newsboy. That's all right. Go on down anyway. I've never heard of them turning down any boy who needed a bed or a meal. And you certainly look as though you need both. Thanks, officer. That's the brace for you. I trained Danny up to the pink, so what's he gonna do now? Shadow box with himself in a ring? What happened to the smell? Ah, he ate some poison hamburger and he's down with cramps in the lug. I'll give you a cramp in a lug. You know what's the matter with the smell? He's down with a cage of canary, that's all. Well, who he got that'll make Danny's wait? What are you doing, dope? I'm thinking, I'm thinking. With what? How about you, monk? Uh, include me out, I'm overtrained. Overtrained nothing. I think what the smell scott is catching. Why, you little so Hey, look what bounced off the cattle cars. Howdy, Zeke, how's crops? Fair to Midland, all through Kansas and Illinois. Kind of dry in the southern part of Indiana. Now, how about selling me the city hall? Say, are you really a farmer? Or is that get up something you save for Halloween? I've been following the crops, working east all the way. It ain't real. A setup for Danny Shea. Right. You got here just in time. We've been waiting for you. You got yeah. here just in time. Well, this is the Dutton oh. home, isn't it? Oh, yeah. oh, oh this is this right the right place. But the officer told me that... Right. The officer's down the street. He's killing me. Well, well, they told me even if I ain't a newsboy, they'll give me a bed and something to eat. Oh, so you're hungry, huh? Horror's a dead log. Good, we'll feed you. How are you with your dopes? Huh? He means can you give it like this. You mean fight? We don't mean ring around a rosy. Well, I can, but I don't like to till I have to. Well, you have to if you want to eat. Hey, what's this? It's private. What'd you bring me? A setup, Danny, me boy, a setup. I don't need no setups. Hello. Save it. Okay.
Where's this guy from? He's a hazy from the country. You'll kill him. Where are you second, son? Why, well, I, I don't know. I'll handle him, Mr. O'Dowd. Oh, all right. The main bow, boys, between Danny Shea, Newsboys home champion, weight 147 pounds. <laughs> What's your name, son? Edward, sir. I'm from Rifle, Nebraska. But I haven't weighed myself in some time. <laughs> and Rifle Edwards, the Nebraska Terror, weight unknown. Four rounds to a decision. Just keep using that right like I showed you. This is a sense, Danny. I don't have to remind you boys about fair play and sportsmanship. Shake hands. Now look, just give them plenty of action. Slow than you might get by. Gotta get your lump sometime. You think I'll let myself go? Well, what have you been doing? Well, I'm just figuring them out. Well, don't figure, fight. You gotta give the customers a show. See if you can stay on your feet for a while. Now give me old one too, Danny. You be like that? Yeah, like that. Gosh, I'm hungry.
Can I eat now? Oh, yes. You can break training, but not too much. Nice going. You put up a great fight. Rifle. Hey, Murph. What do you want? Go over to Raleigh's and get me an oyster. That hunk of soup meat won't fix this mouse. Get it yourself. Hey, when I tell you to do something, jump. Yeah? Yeah. Hey, you shouldn't be hitting him. Oh, I'll bust that bugle on the other side of his face. Yeah, try it. You ain't busting anybody. Oh, just because you put me out by a fluke, you think you make yourself boss around here, huh? Well, you can't. And when I get myself back in shape, I'll get even with you good. Just say when you want to return match. Any day in the week and twice on Sunday. Oh, uh, can it. I want to get some sleep. Me too. Sure tired. Yeah. Give him his pipe so he can dream of a better one about his old man being a sheriff back in Musket, Nebraska. Rifle. Malarkey. Say, you sure know it's all right for me to stay here? O'Dowd put the okay on you, didn't he? You're in like a thief. But O'Dowd says go to Mr. Dutton. Oh, is he the owner of this place? Listen to him, the owner. He's the establisher. He owns the globe. We sell the papers, and that's what you're going to do if you want to make a buck. Yeah, and he's a swell old guy. He sure must be. A quarter of a century ago, before the founding of the Dutton home, comma, the newsboy was New York's gutter snipe, Dash. It's little street Arab with no place to sleep except a bundle of papers or a sidewalk grating. Paragraph. Today, the boys who sell the papers have achieved an essential place in the city's life, comma, a dignity and standing which amply justifies the establishment of the home. Period. And so today, on the 18th anniversary of its founding, the Globe regards that home as its lasting contribution to juvenile welfare. Say it. Just a minute, dear. Set this up in 10-point, two-column on the editorial page, right under the masthead. Now, are you ready, darling? Ready and waiting. As a matter of fact, I'm getting to be known as the waiting Miss Dutton. Where is that Warner? Well, you must remember that Perry is a newspaper man. <laughs> Fine chance I have of forgetting it when he uses that fact every time he wants an alibi. Well, I'm sure you'll make him a very good wife. At least an interesting one. I'd make you an interesting daughter, too, if you'd give me the chance. Listen, old-timer. The newspaper's in good shape. The newsboy's home's doing fine, and there's a chicken and a half in the pot. How about you and me taking a little time off to get some of those lines out of that funny face of yours? <laughs> well, we will, just as soon as things get going a little better around here. And it isn't a funny face. No, I suppose it isn't. At least not to the newsboys. Come on. Good stuff, Hammer. It's not really fine to tell. Some feed, eh, Rifle? Mmm. Give me a banquet every day, don't we? <laughs> and the boys have been doing fine. The ten new ones this week. Pretty, Pretty good, good only me. I go oh. for this chocolate cake, huh? You said. How long have you been with us, Rifle? Too long. Three weeks, Mr. Dutton. Where are you from? Rifle, Nebraska. Left there about a year ago. That's what he says. There was Hasty sticking out under his collar the day he lit here. So they named you after your hometown. That does it, Miss Dutton. That winds him up. Now he starts giving out with a spiel about how his old man was a sheriff and got rubbed out. Is that a fact, Rifle? Yes, sir. He was killed in the line of duty. Never had a chance. There he goes, boys. He's off. Looks like I'm a little late. We didn't expect you to laugh to dessert, Perry. After all, you are a newspaper man. <laughs> yeah, a darn good one. <laughs> I've got a joke for you. Purvis has sold the star to Tom Davenport. What? Well, that means... It means he's picked up a great big club to help get his gang of thieves in office. That means we're in for trouble. I know. It may involve some of these boys. Don't you think you better warn them? Yes, Perry. Get their attention. Attention! <laughs> Have you had enough to eat? Oh! keeping quiet and listening to Mr. Dutton. 
Boys, one of the warming things in my life is the loyalty of you boys who helped me get the paper into the hands of our readers. Up to now, that loyalty hasn't had to extend beyond the usual line of duty. We have been competing with the star in a hard, fair fight. But I'm afraid that from now on, the fight is going to be harder. And certainly, it will not be fair. Not if I know anything about the new owner. Gangsters have no place in the newspaper business. But that is what has happened. A man notorious for his crookedness is now in Ben Purvis' place. We can expect only gangster methods from him. But in warning you, I can also remind you that gangsters are always yellow. <laughs> and now, if you figure that your stake in the paper's success is worth defending, I know I can count on you. Harry, this is a serious situation. Yes, I know. We've never fought it. I'll get your hats. Good night. Good night. Good night. Mr. Dutton, can yes. I say something? Why, certainly, Rifle. I never did get a chance to thank you for letting me move into the home. Well, I'm very glad that you like it. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Good night, Mr. Dutton. Good night. Good morning, Mr. Davenport. Good morning. Hi, Mr. Davenport. Have you read this? Oxygen required to sustain publisher, Howard Price Dutton Stricken. Overcome with a sudden attack of bronchial pneumonia, Howard P. Dutton, publisher of the Globe, lay critically ill at his home yesterday. Listen, Barch, I only bought the star for one reason, to swing the November elections to my candidates. Right now, the Globe is in my way. Dutton's being out of the way ought to make it a lot easier. It's a break for us. We'll lick the Globe while he's on his back. Oh, I don't know about that. There's nothing wrong with Perry Warner's help. Warner's my problem. I know how to handle him. Your problem is circulation. I want you to get a copy of the star into the hands of everybody that can read from now until election day. Our circulation has been showing a slow gain. Yes, but too slow. I've ordered an increased run of 25,000 on each edition. It's up to you to get them out, and I don't care how you do it. I'll do my best. You'd better. If you can't give me results, I'll get somebody that can. So get going. Say when. No, thanks. I only drink during working hours. <laughs> you know, you're very much the way you've been described to me. Well, I think I can safely return the compliment, Davenport. I think I'll be going now. Well, oh, just a moment, Warner. There's something else I want to say to you. Well, I'm a newspaper man. I warn you, I won't keep it confidential. <laughs> I'm a newspaper man myself now, and I'd be glad to have you print it. So let's quit fencing with each other. I have a great deal of respect for your ability. I'd like to have you run the star for me. If you can help me get my people into office on election day, that salary you get on the globe, good as it is, will seem like chicken feed. Have a cigar. I have them made up specially. Yeah. I don't like the wrapper or the cigar. And I don't like you, Davenport. Oh, I don't care what you were mixed up in before. That's nothing compared to what you're trying to do now. A newspaper's a public institution. Well, I'd rather see a 45 in your hand than a newspaper. You could do less damage with it. There aren't enough of those made to get me or any other decent newspaper man to work for you. Miss Dutton will see you in a moment. Hello, boy. How could Ms. you know? Miss Dutton. That? Well, we, uh... Miss Dutton. We just came to tell you that the boys down at the home feel pretty bad about Mr. Dutton being so sick. Oh. Well, it's nice of you to come and tell me. You'll thank them for me, won't you? We sure will. I'd like to say something else. Yes? If you would, please, tell Mr. Dutton that the boys are all working extra hard, and it looks like we're going to sell 2,000 more than yesterday. He won't have to worry about competition. That's fine. Once he knows that, maybe he'll feel better. I'm sure I'd like to hear it if you kindly tell him. You see, he did a lot for us. I mean, the home and everything. And we just think he's swell. And we want him to know that we'd do anything in the world for him. I know he'd be happy to hear that. 
but he died early this morning. They cut the price. What about us? Well, the globe must have come down, too. It stands to reason. Nothing stands to reason in this business. Let's haul over to the paper and find out. Well, the papers won't be off the presses for 20 minutes yet. Let's go anyway. Yeah, come on. Paper! Daily Star! Paper! Hey, right, Daily Star. Only 30 Hey, paper! Paper's done. Ladies and gentlemen, the Daily Star What are you fellas doing, selling yesterday's papers? No, it's today's, and ain't it a beauty? It smells on nice. ice. With thimble crashes. What's the idea of busting out a half an hour early? I'll tell you why. Because we got He-Man running a star, not that Dutton thing. I'll paste you one in your eye. Her name is Miss Dutton. And she's a better newspaper man than any of the lame brains on the star. Ah, oh, baloney, I wouldn't have a dame running my paper. Oh, hold on, we'll catch up with these heels later. Come on, let's go. What do you say, Rifle? Nah, there's no use fighting now. Skip the gutters. Why? Oh, oh, you daddy. Come on. Big bird, big bird, Boys, boys, listen. The stars jumped the gun on us and broke the publisher's agreement about press time. What? We better get the papers out. Maybe with the new price. New price? Sure, the stars down to two cents. That's news to me. That's up to them if they want to lose money. But the price of the globe is still three cents. This is final. No more of that horrible pink paper. From now on, we'll use white stock. And reduce the size of our headlines. Yes, absolutely. Glenn, would you take a look at this proof? All right, Perry. Send it through. But in the morning, the new makeup goes in. Look, Gwen. Don't you think you ought to go a little slow about that switch? After all, it was our style that made the glow famous, you know. Yes, I know. That was Dad's angle. But I have one, too, and now I'm publisher, I'm going to give it a try. We're an honest paper. There's no reason why we shouldn't be a dignified one. No reason, except that the public likes liveliness. Or even the star is copying our format. Let them have it. We're moving on. After all, Perry, change is the pulse of life, you know. Well, it's your paper. I hope you're right. Between you and me and the linotype, I hope so, too. All right, boys. I'm going to call on someone you all know. Danny Shea. <clears throat> boys? I mean, fellow news boys. I'm going to start with a question. What's happened to our paper? You yeah, right. right. Come down there and smack him on the left. Now, to get back to my point. To see old man die, the globe ain't the same. Why, some places I used to sell it, I can't even give it away. Now, what's the answer? Well, I'll tell you. It ain't got the stuff anymore. Something's gone sour on it. And that's why the board of directors, that's me, Rifle, and Monk, we invited Perry Warner here to come up and tell us what the score is. Take it away, Perry. Fellas, I feel swell that you trust me with your confidence. After all, you have a right to have your say, because you were the boys who put the paper on the hands of the reader. Now, you've been grand and decent about not mentioning any names. I know it's been appreciated. So for the moment, let's assume that the lady in charge of the paper is trying to carry on for the old man. So let's give her a little time. Listen, fellas, we used to be able to yell a pretty good headline out of the globe. But what do we got now? European problems and all that junk all the time. How are you going to sell a paper on that? This week, twice I had to go back to the old yell. Extra, they found a body. Read all about it. What body? Say he bet. That's what my public's been asking me. What body and who found it? And I'm stuck. Boys, you're dead right about what's happened to the globe. And it's my job to try to make Miss Dutton understand. Incidentally, uh, I wouldn't want what we talked about here to go any further. 
It's just between us, you know. So, string along with me for a while, will you? Is there any further business? I'm making a motion that the meeting's all washed up and that we go out and see if we can peddle a few final additions. Good idea. Meeting is adjourned. Thanks, Mr. Warner. Good night, Danny. Good night. Rifle, I'm proud of you, the way you've taken hold here. I'm sure Mr. Dutton would have been, too. Well, he gave us a home. We might make a lot of noise, but we know he went out of his way to help us when nobody else would. Uh, he wouldn't ask you to remember that, but I do. What else did Warner say? He said something about Miss Dutton trying to run society in the paper at the same time. Go on, go on. And that we newsboys knew better what was wrong with the Globe than she did. Yeah? I guess that's all. Okay. Go on, take it. I don't want it. Go on, take it before I make you pick it up with your teeth. to this from the opposition. I read it. Now I'll read it. Newsboys dictate globe policy. Newsboys in the Dutton home, the favorite charity of the late H.P. Dutton, took upon themselves last night the task of instructing the owner, Gwendolyn Dutton, in the art of metropolitan journalism. How do you like that? I like it. Who else is going to try and teach me how to run this paper? The janitor staff? Gwen, you were brought up on this paper, on its profits made by the very style you've tossed overboard. Don't let's go into that again, Perry. All right, read your contracts. The circulation is dropping. And when it falls below 500,000, half your advertising will drop out. And then we're really late. I know it'll take time. I know we're going to lose a lot of our readers. But we'll pick up. We'll find our public. Yeah. All nine of them. Look at that notice. Huh? What? You mean we got to sell them or eat them? That's what it looks like, boys. We can't make enough to live on that way. I got to keep the circulation up some way, don't I? I guess you saw that. Newsboys dictate globe policy. That's right. If you boys would stick to peddling instead of meddling, you'd do better. I'll still take my hundred. What I'll be a sucker. Take 80. I'm cutting down to 50. I'll take 50. 40. No, I'll make it 35. Give me 45. 45. I'll take 25. 25? You got a good corner, kid. You can get rid of 60 between now and the next edition. I said 25. 25. How about you, sailor? I don't think I want any. I'll take 30. 30. I'll take 50. 50. Hey, what are our mob pinked on us? Five. What? Pink! Rat and squeal! How would a star know what we talked about? Perry Warner was the guy. What? That... Give him one for me, will you? I take it back. Oh, so you don't want no papers, huh? You must be flush. Frisk him. Oh, still, slug. Yeah, not a red. Yeah, he's clean. The only thing you can get out of him is a nosebleed. I'll get that, too. But first, I want to get something else out of the little squealer. Leave him alone. What do you want me to do? Stand by till he makes my weight? Sailor, if you tell the truth, nobody will hurt you. Well, Bosch promised me ten bucks, but I didn't take it. I didn't think I was telling him anything wrong. Did I know he's going to put what I said in the paper? That's all we wanted to know. Go back to the home and wait now. If you're not there when we get back, don't ever show up. Stand up, you dopes. It's the judge. How does Rival get to be judge? He ain't been to reform school. Go oh, on, it's right up his alley. His old man used to send guys to the rock pile out west. Yeah? Where's his gravel? <laughs> Quiet or I'll have you all up for contempt. Bailiff, shut the yes. You heard what he said, didn't you? 
Now, let's get down to the case. The court has appointed Danny Shea prosecuting attorney. <laughs> now, we have to have a defense lawyer for Sailor. How about you, Mur? Me front for that little squealer? You couldn't pay me. Besides, I'm handling the jury. I say he's guilty. The law says nobody's guilty until he's been convicted by a jury of his peers. Peers? What's that? Well, you know what peers are. Uh, uh, you know, high-class English people. Oh, I get it. We have to have a lawyer for Sailor. Now, oh, let Sailor be his own mouthpiece. He talked plenty. Yeah, when well, he should have been listening. If nobody wants to step up and be Sailor's lawyer, the court will have to appoint somebody. You, Wingy. Sure, appoint me. I'll fix him good. Come on, fellas. We have to give him a fair break. We can't sentence Sailor until all the evidence is in. Oh, what evidence ain't you got? You know what he did. Maybe you want to sign confession before we give him his lumps. I'll get that for you, too. I know how to do it. I says we whack him over the with a sack. The court will not stand for any third degree. Tape up his kisses so he won't talk so much. All right, if nobody wants to defend him, I'll do it. Bailiff, deliver the prison. What's the idea to waste some more time? Let's find him guilty first and then bring him down. No, that's habeas corpus. It won't stand up in the Supreme Court. Bring down the prison. Weasel, it's the law. Jury, have you reached a verdict? Sure, we got a verdict. You heard us. Pronounce the verdict. All right, verdict. No, I mean tell the court. Is he guilty? Oh, you want the routine spiel? Okay. <clears throat> us, the jury, at a first criminal court of the newsboy's home, finds that creep. I mean, the defendant. Oh, guilty. Boys. What do you call a doctor? We say that. Bring him right over here. Let's get it, doctor. What's the matter? Come on, go get the matter. Well, who's going after the doctor? Uncle Rifle. Oh, you hurt bad, kid? We was only gonna learn you not to think. I, I had a couple of fellas. I know I talked out of time, but... We'll skip it this time, won't you? I ain't never gonna do it again. Don't worry, sailor. You'll be all right. The dwarfs and the pixies were helpless. It was all beyond their power. It was dusk in the enchanted forest. The hush of evening was falling. Then through the stillness of the forest, a clatter of hoofs was heard. As on the road to the castle, Prince Florizelli, handsome knight of the court, fled to the rescue of his lady. You have a Shh. Quiet, fellas. We want to know how this comes out. Okay, where was we? Prince Florizelli was chasing through the forest on his, uh... Hey, what was he on? His charger. What's that? Charger, dope. His plug. You know, the Tina hitch on the front of an ice wagon. Yeah! All right, all right, you don't have to break an arm, I get it. A jackass. Yeah. Quiet, fellas. So Prince Florizelli spurred his noble steed on to the enchanted forest. Only the north winds were faster. Behind him he could feel the hot breath of the evil wizard. That's the villain. For a head made a castle in which the princess was held captive in a dungeon. She was in solitary. Only another league stood before him. The Nationals are the Americans. Quiet, Lug. Go on, Monk. Would Prince Florizelli reach the enchanted castle and slay the dragon with his trusty blade ere the wizard overtook him? Who the excitement is getting me? You take over, Trouble. I got a hunch the evil wizard's gonna nail him. Why well, he can? You can't beat an evil wizard. I got two wizards and loves out the prince. Put it up, right? We're all the best. Okay. Anybody got any more wizards? Put it up. Come on, give me some. Who paid my quarter? I'll take a quarter on the I'll take a quarter on the prince. Put it up. Come on, you're faded. Okay, go ahead. Faster than the lightning flew Prince Florizelli. His steed seems to have grown wings. Skip that. Get to the finish. Here it is. Rifle, get the door ready. Clang went the gates into the leering face of the wizard. There was a puff of smoke and the smell of brimstone and sulfur as he was consumed right there and then by his own rage. 
Pass over the door, Rifle. They're starting to wind up. The prince and princess lived happy ever after. He looked up the answer. It's a fake. Get out! 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 I've done everything but crawl in here on my hands and knees. And I'll do that, too, if it'll help the paper. Getting hysterical isn't like you, Perry. Look at that print order, 340,000. Well, we used to send almost that many papers to the suburbs alone. It'll pick up. You'll see. We'll win out. I doubt it, with the star putting on the pressure the way it is. Why, our funds are so low, the board's even had to close the kitchen of the newsboy's home. We can't give up now. I can't and I won't. Well, I can. It's easy when I see you ruining everything it took your father years to build. That's the way you feel about it, Perry. Maybe you'd be happier working someplace else. Now you're making sense. Beginning Monday, September 19th, the kitchen of the Dutton home will be closed for an indefinite period. No further meals will be served in the home. Rates will be adjusted to conform. What? There it is, boys. Big as life. Yeah, and twice as tough. No more chow. I'll bet this never would have happened if Mr. Dutton was alive and still running the paper. Well, the home is still here. If the paper's having trouble, it's up to us to stand by it. That's right. Fine talk, but try eating it. I'm going out after something more filling. What makes you think we ought to hire you? Because you can use me, that's why. Doing what, for instance? You ain't talking to no kid with pedals, papers after school. I know the game. Can you handle a crew? Sure. And I know where I can get them, too. Well, we'll try you first. You can go to work tonight. How much? Well, we'll see what you can do for a week. Then if you can deliver, I'll give you 20 bucks. 20 bucks? What do I look like, a sucker? I know what you're putting out. 35 a week. Then why'd you ask? What could I lose? Maybe you were putting out more. Me last dime. Ah, you're getting off easy with your appetite. Here's mine. It's only 15 cents, Rifle. It's better than me at that. I couldn't even give the gloves away today. We got enough, fellas. I'll go get the chow. We'll have a real feed. Make it snappy. I'm so hungry, all my seams are loose. Just hold everything. We are. Our belt. What are you doing here? Nothing that concerns you, Muzzler. Hiya, fellas. Hey, look who's here. The prodigy. Thought you divorced that big shot. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. Maybe it's up to you guys. What are you talking, wacky or something? I'm wacky. You know the panic's on with you guys is from hunger. You're looking kind of flush. Get a load of this. A week's pay. Now, Michigan bankroll, one five with a lot of cigar coupons under it. All right, wise guy. Read it. Five, ten, fifteen. Count them. Seven fives. That's what they're paying me. Thirty-five bucks a week. And how you been? We're doing all right. What are you giving me? I've been checking up on you guys. If any one of you made four bucks this week, you did good. Yeah, well, we're still doing all right. It sure looks it. Listen. Rifle will be here in a minute, and he'll oh, clean. You still got you bulldozed, huh? You too, Monk? Nobody's got me bulldozed. That's what you say. You see this, Roll? Well, you guys turn your pockets inside out, get ten bucks between you, and you can have the thirty-five. Well, what's the matter? Oh, I see. Now, look. I want to get me a new crew together. Guys I know. Twenty-five bucks a week. Then we'll have to leave the home. Oh, you'll wake up one day and find yourselves out in your ears anyhow. The star don't run no home, but Hustlin' Stars pays off. And with dough, you can live any place. We ain't interested. Don't be suckers all your lives. Twenty-five bucks a week against maybe two and a half you've been making. Wait, think it out for yourselves. Think what you can buy for twenty-five bucks a week. Here's the thirty-five. Whack it up among the five of them. What do you say? On the level or... Wait a minute, Murph. How do we know this ain't just high-pressure baloney? I'll take you right down to the guy. Just a second, fellas. Let's wait for Rifle. If he says it's okay, well, then it's okay. You're gonna listen to that guy again. What good did it get you so far? How do you know he ain't drawing down a big hunk every week just to keep you guys in line? Ah, yeah. shut up. He kicks in with every cent he makes. One of these days, the gold will get back on its feet. If we run out now, we're cooked for good. Oh, so the gold's gonna do a comeback, huh? Sure. Without Perry Warner? What do you mean? Oh, why, luck. Steve and Perry's ditched the globe. Come on, you dopes. Get on a bandwagon. 
Does kind of look like we're trying to fly a dead pigeon. Why, sure you are. Come on. Just to show you you're traveling real company, I'll buy you a dinner. A steak dinner? With all the trimmings. What do you say? I say, where's my hack? Me too. Come on, Trouble. Boy, am I hungry. I'm so hungry the whole day. Well, what's the idea, fellas? Where are you going? Out of the way, small fry. They're traveling with Swell Company. Well, give some steaks a bouncing around. Yeah, you better come along, Rifle. Sure, Rifle. Get on the bandwagon. It's okay, ain't it, Dan? Oh, I guess so. No, thanks. I don't want any part of it. Come on, fellas. Don't be a numb chay. Didn't you go too, sailor? Would you like steaks? Oh, steaks are for softies. Boy, give me a good hot dog any day. You're all right, sailor. They're all right, two rifles. It's just, well, I guess they don't like hot dogs, that's all. Yeah. I guess that's it. Dowd, what's happening here? Didn't you know? No, I've been away on a hunting trip. What's become of the boys? The boys? They've retired on their incomes. And you see the reward I've got after 40 years on the globe? Night watchman. It's tough. You might have stopped it, Perry. She wouldn't listen to me. She should have. The city circulation of the globe just about hit bottom. That's right. Good night, Adele. Good night. Yes, yes, I know. But that firm's been advertising with the Globe for the past 20 years. Why should they take out their ad now? Mr. Phillips is a hard-boiled businessman, and he places his advertising where the circulation justifies Oh, all right. Here you are, Harry. <laughs> what is it now? Uh, did you wish to see a boy named, uh, what's the name? Edwards. Rifle Edwards. Edwards. Oh, oh, yes. Tell him to come in, please. Hello, Miss Dutton. You remember me? Of course, Rifle. Uh, won't you sit down? Oh, no, thanks. Uh, I'd rather stand. I'm more used to it. How are the rest of the boys, Rifle? Uh, I guess they're not doing so well trying to sell the globe. Well, they're doing just fine, Miss Dutton. Sailor and me have a swell spot, right downstairs, practically. What I came to tell you about... Yes, sir. Well, you remember the last time I saw you. Well, what we were willing to do for your dad, we'd just as soon do for you. Maybe more. I appreciate that, Rifle. But don't you think it's a lost cause? You know, I have a feeling that the boys are holding a lot of resentment for me, on account of the closing of the home. Oh, no, no, Miss Dutton. It, it's not your fault. Sailor says it's the breaks. The breaks? Sure, people haven't got enough to spend on papers. They've got enough to spend on the star, haven't they? Oh, that rag, what's it got? Nothing but a lot of pictures and big headlines about murders. And that's what Perry Warner says we should have in the Globe. Him? He ran out on you when you needed him most, didn't he? He can't do the paper any good. Don't judge him too harshly, Rifle. After all, he did what he thought was right. Well, he ratted, that's what he did. And if he thinks that's doing right, we don't want to have any part of him. I guess that's all, Miss Dutton. It's like Sailor says. We won't do a Perry Warner on you. I know you won't. Eight on the 
got it. Here it is. Oh, right here. Right here. Get Close. your coffee. Close. Close. Well, sailor, I'm glad to see you up and around again. How are you, Rifle? Hey, Rifle, who's this mug? I don't know him and I don't want to. Paper, mister? Now, wait a minute. Maybe I'll have something to tell you fellas later. Tell it to your friends. You got any? Evening gloves. Hey, right get your gloves. Hey, paper, paper, mister? Get your gloves. They paper, found the body. Paper, Read all about it. We're headed for the rocks, Miss Dutton. We've lost 15,000 city sales this week. I thought the upbeat would have set in by now. I don't know. Good evening, Mr. Warren. I'll tell Miss... Excuse me a minute, will you, Harvey? I have something to say to Miss Dutton. Certainly, Perry. Hello. Surprised? A little. Surprised that someone should tell you to stop before everything goes down the chute? I know it does look as if that's what I've been trying to do, but I... But what? I've tried to warn you, and what good has it done for anyone except Tom Davenport? Oh, go on. I know I deserve it. But nothing you can say can compare with the things I've been saying myself. Can this be the problem, child? I'll admit I was wrong. I'll admit I made a mess of everything, but at least I have a little sense left. So? So, I'm asking you to come back. You mean just back to the paper? We'll talk about that later. But as far as the paper goes, your boss. The big one? The only one. Of the paper, I mean. Daniels, go over all this correspondence and give me a rattling good story on the attempts of the Star Gang to break the globe. Right, sir. You, Bill, see what you can dig up from Davenport himself. Okay. Hartley, your department goes back to normal. It may win back some of our boys. We sure need them. And Ed, bring out the large type again and get some more pink paper. Right. You pay one cent a piece for your paper. Yeah. Well, they like old times. Boy, look at that makeup. Yeah, 85 cents if you buy 100. Perry Warner's order. Give me 100. Me too, wrap them up. Give me 100 too. I'll take 50. Yeah, and you don't have to eat them if you don't sell them. How's that? <laughs> Perry squared himself, all right. He's aces, that guy. <laughs> Figures, Barch. Maybe you can tell me what's happened to our circulation. Sure, boss. Since Perry Warner came back to the Globe and, and those kids... Alibis. I want results, not excuses. I told you that when I took over this paper. I got results. We almost drove the Globe off the streets. And then those kids... Those kids again. Here I am, running a million-dollar political campaign. I buy my own newspaper. I stand a chance of getting run out of this town. Or worse, a new blab about a lot of kids. What the devil do I care about them? Slug them, drown them, but get rid of them. But, boss, what you're talking about is war. And circulation wars demand expert handling. Me? I'm just a guy who was a newsy once himself. Then you won't handle it my way. Oh, don't get me wrong, boss. I ain't got no scruples. I just don't know how. But I can get hold of a guy for you. Who? An expert who's lying low right now in St. Paul. I don't know what he calls himself now. Well, I don't care what he calls himself. Get him here. Okay. I want to have the globe stopped a month before the November elections. That's all that should concern you. All right. But I didn't come all the way here from St. Paul for a hit-and-run job. It's got to be worth my while. I want 25 grand put in the bank for me. Now. That's steep. You better get another guy. You can't run a circulation war with buttons. What guarantee have I that you can break the globe? Look, you want it out of the way before the November elections. I'll break it inside of three weeks, sure. They can print a million copies if they want to, but they won't be selling any. What name do you want that account opened in? Frank Barber. Okay. Parts will give you all the help you need. All you fellas that cover the Midtown section take a hundred apiece. Now I want four guys with a truck to cover the stadium the night after the fights. You, you, you and you. Where's your mom? 
All right. All you can handle for the railroad station. If you bump into any of those globe hustlers, don't forget who you're working for. All right. Get going. Come on, come on, paper. Hey, all paper, extra paper here. Get the globe. Extra paper, get the globe. You want sell these sheets? What's a big idea? Just what we said. You'd like to peddle a real paper like a star, wouldn't you? I guess so. Star, paper, star, extra, paper, star, star. Here's another wing, will you? So sit down, will you? So sit down. What about the crowd? same day, 22,000 papers. What'll we do? Get duplicate bundles and send them out in a fleet of cabs. Don't waste time. Yes, sir. Hey, what's hey, the uh, idea? Not my friend. We're here to help you. Hey, uh, get yeah. Out. Hope you get your lots if you sell those globes. Hey, uh, read all about it. Three hell. Uh, give me a globe, sir. Oh, we're all sure. on a globe, sir. Uh, have a star. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, uh, get your late paper. I'll here. take read you. All of you. No, no. If you heard us, we'll call a cop. Hey, uh, get your late star. Hey, uh, sir, star here. Get your late star here. Paper. Thank you. Noon edition globe. Globe. Paper. Paper? Globe, mister? How many you got left? Not many. Sales are picking up. Oh, they are, huh? Now, don't get sore about it. We're only trying to help you. I'm running my business my way. I know you are. And we get this right. have got to be stopped. Here we are, just getting our sails up again, and what happens? The star hoods crack down on us. But why don't we crack back? That's a good idea. Well, we don't have We load it up to the guard, and we roll. Hey, Rifle, you sure this routine's okay at Perry? Sure it is. He gave us a truck, didn't he? He's got to go for it. Didn't he say the circulation department needed shock troops? Sure, that's yeah. what he said. I hoid him. Okay, then let's get the war. Hold it. You fellas don't show yourselves until you get the signal. Globes don't want them. Take them away. I don't want my face torn to pieces again. Mr. Flynn, you're getting these free of charge. Besides, nobody will hurt you. We'll even stand by and watch your place. You too? Well, he's the scout. If anybody comes to bother you, you'll see what happens. All right, leave him here. Thanks. Sailor, on your toes and keep your eyes open. That's me, Rifle. Right? Nice. Bait's all set. All we got to do is wait. We thought you were washed up with a globe. What do you mean? That's the way I make my living. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
Catch you selling any more globes, I'll wipe you out of business. I know that guy. I saw him first. Wait a minute. Leave him alone. He's got a right to sell any kind of paper he wants. Get out. Let me handle him. Wait a minute. Give him one to get the daddy. Get him blind. To do. Somebody's got to tell his ma. I wouldn't want the job. I wouldn't know how to do it. Me neither. That's my job. I'll have to tell her. I got to do something. It's as if I... It's as if I did it myself. I, I don't know why. I... Yes, I do. Sure, I do. Because I wanted to be a big shot. My pocket full of dough. I wanted... Rifle knows. He's smarter. 
Where is he? If I square myself with him, if I show him I'm all washed up with those guys. Hey, Rifle! Hey, I seen him. He jumped back in the car that those pals of yours get into. A black four-door job? Yeah, that was it. They headed for Frankie Barbers. Hey. But they find Rifle, man. Come on! Fuck it! Come on, come on, where's Kraft? Went on ahead to the airport. Something happened. It wasn't his fault, Frankie. They ganged up and he had to shoot. Lost his marbles, huh? I told you that guy Kraft was no good. Who was it? A kid. One of those newsboys. Things got all mixed up, but nobody spotted him. With a mob like that, there's always eyewitnesses. Well, don't stand there like a couple of mobs. Do what I told you. Okay. Hey, come in, you. What about this hanging outside the door? I'll take care of him. Do what I told you. Talk. Where'd you come from? Nebraska. <laughs> Rifle, Nebraska. You killed a man. My father. Give me the police. The police! Drop it, kid. You're going to dinner with us, aren't you? Oh, do you think we'd miss the 19th anniversary of the home? Uh. Sure, we're going with you as soon as we sell these gloves. We'll meet you there. No, no, you don't. You're going with us. How many you got left? Oh, about uh, 26, I guess. Is that all? Well. Get busy. Very slow, just now. Get your final edition here. Come on, come on, boy. No, no, no. Do it with feeling, honey. Look like this. Get your latest glove just start the final edition. Get it? Yeah. Get your latest glove just out the final edition. Yes, Charlena's Sloan just out the final edition. Oh, all about the minor. Get your last edition of the glove here. Yeah, what do you mean, sir? Read all about that <laughs> big handicap here. Latest racing results right here. Thank you. Extra, they found the body. <laughs> that's it, that's the stuff. 
I said I'd make a newspaper man out of you. Jolene Sloan, down train driver here. Yes, Jolene Sloan. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Got any more? No. No? That does it.